following is a comfortably zoned radio network production. A back giant space ball of the San Francisco variety, past, present, and future. I'm Ralph Tycho of the comfortably zoned radio network, and under some somber circumstances. My guest is uh, returning regular to these airwaves and former giant bat boy. I'd like to welcome back Patrick Quinlan. Hello, Patrick. Hello, my dear friend. How are you, Ralph? Thanks for having me. Well, my pleasure. Always, uh, uh, for me, a thrill talking to you because uh, we have a certain bond that um, we're giants at heart, me from the old New York days. And you from the San Francisco days, you were um, uh, were somber because uh, your friend and um, my Facebook friend, and uh, certainly no more than a passing acquaintance, but uh, one of my childhood idols, really, Orlando Cepeda is uh, has been stricken. He is ill, critically um, ill. He was felled by um, some heart problems. He hit hit his head. Um, It's it's, uh, to be prayed over or given good vibes, whatever one believes in. Certainly good thoughts to a man who uh, was instrumental in the Giants Championship in 1962. Um, he was the the first San Francisco Giant hero. The Giants didn't accept Willie Mays readily. He Willie came from New York, and um, the San Francisco Giants were uh, looking for a hometown, or at least a, a San Francisco Giant who had no experience in New York. And quickly they adopted Cha Cha. Um, Patrick, if you will, some of your memories of the man. You knew him in the clubhouse. You were the giant bat boy for a while, and um, certainly have uh, maintained a lifelong friendship with him and his children. Um, Patrick, talk to me about Cha Cha. Well, just. You know, power of prayer, a million thoughts is is my first thought when I first heard the news. So, you know, this is this is one of our heroes, and uh, getting to know he and his his lovely wife who just passed, and and uh, his 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 boys, and uh, um, you know, I'm just I'm just sad in giant land here, you know, because those those Orlando and and you know, our giants, you know, to some of us, I mean, it's a big part of our lives. Cheers, Mm -hmm. you know, on the serious side of stuff. I mean, they're just, I don't know, it's just a magical game. And I think when you get to know these guys and know what they go through and just how they've touched you uh, in so many ways from playing catch to playing pepper to being in clubhouse every day to uh, giving you, you know, a bat or whatever in Orlando's case with me personally is he allowed me to be part of his baseball camps which is really uh, a lot more intimate because you don't got the stress of of uh, the seasons. And right. it was just great being around him. And I remember, you know, one of our best camps was when it was Bobby Bonds. Orlando had Bobby come out and by the blue that particular week. And it was just great being around him. And then uh, me and my brother had a giant sports bar, and he, he uh, came in a handful of times with his entire family. And, you know, that's it's just a big deal. And, uh um, uh, just to be around somebody of, of that status because Orlando, excuse me, Orlando's so big and strong. I know Baby Bowl, I mean, when you're around, there's only there's only so many people that you can actually know that you've known in the game and those that have been in the game a lot inside the pros, you know, inside of MLB for years and years, you know, player, minor league players, then, then they played in the big leagues and then scouting or in the front office. And Orlando's one of those guys like Dick Gallon and <laughs> McCovey and 
Harmon Kellebrew or Frank Howard or even Aaron Judge or Giancarlo, just just raw strength. And when you're around him and you shake his hand and, and you're around that presence, it's like that was psychotic. It was giant. He was an iconic player. He was an right. iconic legend from Puerto Rico. He's a Hall of Famer. He's a, he went to St. Louis and one of the worst trades in giant history. <laughs> and so many people will never forget that. Yeah. Well, let, let's talk two things. Let's talk the giant situation when they made the trade. They had two future Hall of Fame first basemen. One, of course, was Orlando, the other being Willie McCovey. You would think under normal circumstances that they could find room for both players in today's day and age. Uh, certainly one would have been at the H, uh, you know, not with the Giants, but you know what I'm saying. They both sure. they both could not play left field. They were both totally inept in left. And it was clear that the Giants had to make a move. Ray Sadecki at the time, and we're talking, um, looking back, uh, 2020 is, is always, um, foresight is always 2020, that kind of thing. He was a 20-game a winner. He was a superb left-hander, yeah. and they had to make a move. Sadecki just doesn't come through for him. It was uh, one of those things that... Um, uh, later, ironically, he was instrumental. I'm a Met fan uh, since the New York Giants moved to San Francisco. I'm a Met fan first. And Ray Sadecki, the same Ray Sadecki, comes back to the Mets in 73, becomes a spot starter and a terrific relief pitcher, and um, was instrumental in them winning the NL pennant in 73. So, go figure in yeah. sports. Um, but the Giants, that comes down as one of the worst trades. Pure hitter. And um, before he tore up his knee, very early in his career, he was fast. Big, strong, fast. He was like Don Baylor. He was the best, that's the best way I can, can describe him. Yeah. He he come barreling into second base to break up a double play, and um, he was yeah, very, good luck. Yeah, good luck if you're you're trying to turn it and uh, want to live to see another day. He was a tremendous competitor, and um, the son of a uh, he was the baby bull. The bull in Puerto Rico was his dad. His dad was yeah. reputed to be bigger and um, and just a great player himself. And to give him some further credit, as I try to remember to do when we're talking about Latin American players or Japanese players coming over here to play or anybody from a different culture, you got to remember that's all part of the adjustment that um, they have to go through the daily, daily grind of what's right to say, how to order lunch, this, that, and the other thing. And that's a million percent correct. Even then, it was so much tougher. Right. And uh, today, uh, they have academies in these countries, um, the Dominican, where they teach English and customs and mores and what have you, along with the baseball education. It's a different world. And um, I don't know, we could talk about society changing. The more it changes, the more it stays the same. Um, Witness last year's fiasco in Boston when when Adam uh, Jones was just heckled and uh, uh, screamed at with racial obscenities in 2017 in a northern city. Um, So imagine how it was in um, 1962 on in Americana. 62 was before the Civil Rights Movement, Mm -hmm. incidentally. So um, 
Orlando and um, every everyone else that makes the majors, no matter what, pays a hell of a price and are to be commended. But especially from a foreign country and this, that, and the other thing, he was a terrific star with the Giants. His number is up there, number 30, retired up there next to Willie and Gaylord Perry, Willie, the other Willie, Willie Mack. Um, Juan. Juan, of course, uh, of course. Um, and the one thing I love about the San Francisco Giants they pay homage to the old New York Giants and the stars that um, grace them from, uh, you know, pre San well, Francisco. Oh, Terry and Lottie Irwin and Chris, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and Carl Hubble is another. And McGraw. Well, that Ma- Pardon me? Yeah, the the lefty. That's Scroogey. Carl yeah. Oh, Carl yeah, absolutely. Was, yeah, he was and unreal. he was also... Carl Hubble, in his retirement days, a, a super scout with the Giants and an instructor. Big time. Yeah, he, he yeah. Minor leagues. Um, he was out in the he minor leagues. He was instructing. He instructed John DeQuisto, among, amongst others, coming up in, in the system. And, oh, yeah. And um, he was a gentleman, too. Carl Hubble, and one of my heroes when I was growing up, we had Mel Ott and Carl Hubble to look back on in Hall of Famers. And you would think that with all the Yankees' glory, that they would be the team with the most Hall of Famers. Not so. Right. The New York slash San Francisco Giants have more Hall of Famers than the New York Yankees. So, proud to be a, a I'm proud that. to be a giant apologist. You're proud to be a giant fan. Um, good, we can pay homage to Will to Willie to Orlando, and just hope to hell that um, whatever's in store for him is uh, bearable. How about that? Um, uh, yeah, big, big sigh. And uh, Patrick, maybe we can change the pace a little bit. And um, uh, real quick, I don't want to make this a, a long, drawn-out thing. But the last few days, it's the opening of spring training. Pitches and catches reported. Today was the first exhibition game. Or is tonight. I don't know, know which. Today. 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 Um, yeah. Did everybody stay healthy? Because that's all that really matters yep. in spring training. I, I got to yeah, tell you. Um, um, anything about the coming season that uh, strikes comes to mind for you that uh, you think is going to go down, good, bad, or indifferent? Um. You know, when, when they talk about Longoria and they talk about McCutcheon and, and Jackson and we got old and you know, that's all that's all just you know, blah 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 blah. You know, you get you got quality players and they, and they just you're coming out to you're coming out to San Francisco in this in this beautiful city and this you know, the, the new Taj Mahals and you're you're playing in in this beautiful ballpark in front of 40 plus thousand. I mean, that's going to be great for guys like, I mean, McCutcheon playing in a beautiful ballpark in Pittsburgh, no doubt, but you know, they, they, they're just, just coming off the three world series recently. And all those guys are going to be so pumped that, you know, it's vital they get out of the gate. It's really important. We'll be able to tell, but that, those are great additions. And, you know, there's no, <coughs> Excuse me, you know, last year everything could go wrong, did, and everybody knows that and Lanson and Matt Baum, Will Smith, all these guys, and down years everybody and Dalton, and all that stuff, is that everybody's everybody's all together, everybody's healthy, everybody's excited. I've been seeing Matt Baum to win 20, you know, I haven't talked contracts with him because of the last year little little stunt. And, you know, Cueto, 
Quite as concerned because he came into camp a little bit heavy, but you know, hopefully he rebounds and uh, you know has a solid year after he made and all that, and maybe opting out. And uh, Shamarja, Shamarja's got to hold his own instead of being a teaser. Well, he'll throw a great game, looks great. Next thing you know, he gets gets the ball up and you know, uh, you know, didn't get that quality start. You but, know, I take my chances with those three. Yeah, yeah, so um, will I. Uh, no question about that. I want to know what possibilities there are for more than decency from the third and um, the, the fourth and fifth starters. Uh, Ty Block or Chris Stratton or, you know, um, I like that. I like Ty Block. I think he's the, the composure guy. Okay. Got a little Dravecki, a little Dravecki in him. I like that a lot. I just, uh, you know, He's just he's a steady Eddie pro, mm-hmm. and uh, you know fist pot, That's just that's that's where the competition lies. You know Stratton looks good, but you know the Giants have some history there. The fifth spot with like everybody, so that's going to be interesting. I mean, if you're going into spring training with that, knowing that you're starting nine, you know you got to look at your bench a little bit, and that your relievers with well, you know Melanson and and. Uh, and you know you get Will Smith back. I got Tony Watson. That was great. And then, then uh, Hunter Strickland and and uh, and Okert and uh, Osich. I mean, I, I I like them. I think there's going to be when you bring in and you build like that with with two legit superstars because mm-hmm. Lagori is and McCutcheon is. Then that 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 brings such a positive vibe to this team, especially after reeling the '98 that. You know, especially true giant fans that know, mm-hmm. that have, have always had the pulse on the on the on the team and all that. That's that's really exciting to look at. I mean, Posey, I think Posey's going to have a big year. You know, the twelve bombs and then being in a lineup where you got no pitches. So that that's the number one guy. I look at McCutcheon. I mean, boy, where do you go? Yeah. I hope Hunter. It'd be nice to see Hunter just be steady. His last year there in left field, a new position. The ball just comes differently from a left-handed hitter. As opposed to the right-handed here to there, so he's a pro. He'll adjust. Got a shorter pro. That's all good. But this is. I think it's going to be just awesome. I think it's going to be a great year. And I think why it's going to, if it's going to be a great year, it really depends on that getting out of the gate. I mean, you just get out of the gate and win a bunch of games in April. You know, what's nice to see too is that the Giants um, they have Sandoval and Blanco on the bench. And those are guys that have provided spark, of course, in the past. Uh, uh, Sandoval to all three championships, this, that, and the other thing. Blanco's been a pretty good uh, fill-in over the years. And uh, I think veteran bench is important because, you know, it's a long season. you got got to believe. And that's exactly why. Exactly. Yeah. Some of those guys, you know, that's why it's so hard, Rob. You know, it's the hardest sport on the planet. I mean, it's such a grind, spring training in six months, and then if you get to postseason. Yeah, I mean, as, Marty, as Marty Lurie says, every day's a new chapter. It's a marathon, not a mile run, uh, not, not a hundred-yard dash. And that's what makes it interesting. The opening of spring training is, in fact, the first cha- chapter in the book of the season. We're going to turn a new page from last year. Last year was disastrous for a number of reasons, Um, notwithstanding that I think the Dodgers pulled the year out of their butts. Um, Right. (laughs) But that's that's another issue, and I I can't possibly, being an old Giant fan, be objective about either team, the Giants or, or... the Dodgers, that's what I admire about you so much. Even though you are a fanatical fan, you have the ability to give us, uh, we the audience, um, just an objective point of view of what's going on. And you don't, without pulling any punches. Um, that said, before I ask you your memory of the one outstanding memory you have of Orlando that will tell us what kind of a person he is that we'd have no way of knowing, 
I'm going to ask you, what worries you the most about this upcoming season from the standpoint of, whoa, we may have a weak link here? Hunter Pence, probably. Okay. I'm just really concerned about Hunter. I mean, you know, I when you saw Hunter Pence as a giant, everybody knew about his work regiments and how intense he is about being a pro's pro and giving the team all that energy. And he's he's such a uh, uh, premium player and his output, and he's so insane about his workouts that, you know, a couple of years ago I go, I felt like if I was really tight with him, you know, Hunter, you you got to tone it down a little bit in the winter, man. You don't have to run from here to Canada and back in a day, mm-hmm. you know, and, and other workouts that he does. Because I think with all that, 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 you know, as older players, guys just, they taper off a little bit because they really, you know, they're, they're old. They're, they're, their eyesight's getting older. Their bodies are getting older. You know, the, the skill level, you got to, you got to, you got to cut that off by 20%. You know, every mm-hmm. player, a lot of players as they get older, they'll do different things because baseball's so hard, especially if you've got to the big leagues at, at the young 20s, you start getting in your 30s, it really changes you. Either you're going to make a great push for the next few years in your 30s or or you're going to start having some injuries and you're out of the game at 31. Yeah, and it's like I'm really concerned with him because you know all the infield hits are just you know the numbers and and when you would see him play and you're going you just but he's so hard on himself that I always thought maybe like a couple of years ago, bro, just turn it turn it down a little bit with your I mean even day of games I mean he's in the gym he's in the he's in the workout facility doing weights and stuff right after the game. Hmm. So Hunter Pence is key. I think he's a major key here. Because, you know, he's a and big, you're, he's a you're big, showing you're yeah. showing some concern yeah. in advance. Correct. Okay, that's a, uh, that's all I'm looking for, Patrick. You know? Is some good analyzation that uh, doesn't necessarily come from the heart, because you know we could both sit here on the phone and go uh, rah rah rah, and there's a lot to a lot of rah rah rahs going on. They in improve their inf- their bullpen immensely. Just um, pure and simple. And you got Bumgarner coming back, and you always have Posey, and I think Panic and Crawford make as good a double play combination as um, they have. And <laughs> on, the planet. Long- on the planet, anywhere. And you add Longoria, who's... Um, literally in the prime of a career where you can say, you can say there's going to be 25 homers, there's going to be 85 ribbies, and that he's going to hit 280. Now, how many? Solid. 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 Now, you read his baseball card, and it looks the same every year, given the normal flow, flow and ebb of a season who's around him, who's supporting him, this, that, and the other thing. But he stayed healthy, and as we both know, health is is everything. Um, So I'm looking looking forward to the season, of course. Well, it's just, it's it's so brutal from last year to this year. It it seemed like I haven't watched a game in a year or so, you know? (laughs) Right, right. You know what I mean? Because they were out of it, you know, uh, so early that, you know, yeah, you watch the rest of the games, and yeah, I love every team and every player, all that great stuff, but your boys aren't, you, there's no intensity. You know, I watch the games. I'm not I'm not the happiest guy to watch a Giants game with. You know, I got to refrain when I go and watch them live, but when I'm watching once on TV, you got the big screen going, you know, you're standing up yelling at stuff because you love it, you love it so much, you know, you just... You just air it out. Well, you, you know, just, you know, it's nice, and I, I did this a couple of nights ago. They have on YouTube. You can have world playoff and World Series highlights 
or complete games if you want, all the way back. This is an age we live in. So you can just sit and watch a pincer in it. Um, uh, pens, a pence um, in his prime without the injuries. You can uh, you see Romo, exactly. Romo with that right arm up. Um, and if that doesn't inspire you, if you, you could watch like 20 games in a row that they're pulling out stuff, three games down, this, that, and the other thing. Oh, no, it's sick. It's awesome. It, it is awesome, and um, I don't know if we broached this subject, but with that in mind, those three championships, the Lincecum, the Kane, everything that the ups and downs with Kane, with Lincecum's father coaching him and all, yeah. I think getting rid of Rigetti was if – Surprising, let's put it that way. I thought, um, especially with Bumgarner coming back and what have you, I would have thought um, that they'd have kept him. That's all. Well, we were talking about that when it all came down, and I just go, and then the the whole turnover. Mm -hmm. I go, Ralph. I go. That that is like. There's more to it than that. That's, you know what I mean. That's mm -hmm. like that's it. No, you want, you could have it been? Years. Could have it been a rift between Bochi and Rigetti? No, I just think that, you know, we're talking to Fortune 500s now, and that's what I tell a lot of my friends about what's changing. They're trying to change the world. They're trying to speed it up. <laughs> oh, stop it! Don't touch baseball. All that stuff. But what's happening is the Giants want to protect that brand, and that brand is, yeah. Uh, they're, they're talking about, yeah, the, the trips to the mound, and that's affecting the TV audience. TV audience controlled by the networks, and the networks are controlled by the advertising and all that other stuff. Mumbo-jumbo, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, it's all about, we lost 98. It's panic fever. 29 other teams are, are bringing, bringing all these analytic teams in. The Giants have two or three people that are out of uniform, Ralph, that are, that are, that are called offensive offensive production guy or uh, defense preventer guy, you know, these these Anal titles. Are they analytic guys? No. No, they're just different, like, defending. I don't know exactly what their – I've got to research exactly what their roles are. But everybody in the organization now, there's 30 people day to day, right? So the Giants are going, well, well, the Cubs won. The Astros are winning with their great plan by their GM that – Gave them a plan that we're, they're going to win a World Series last year, and, and it came true, and good for them. About, well, yeah, we're going to suck here and lose 300, 300 100 lost season, but we're, we're, going to, we're going to trust our scouting people that we're going to draft quality humans like Altuve and Correa and Bergman and Springer and Guriel and, and the McCullers, and then we're going to Florida, and then Dallas kick Keiko. You know, the, the plan worked. Well, everybody's getting into all this experts on on all these different philosophies and theories and 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 about defense and offense and running the bases better and defend better and and the the, the clubhouse was uh, was a C minus as far as atmosphere last year and vibe and I mean I mean this, so I, it felt like the Giants that there was such a panic there because they're run by a big board and everybody gets together and goes. Okay, no, we're not. No, it's time. It's time for the change because there's so much turnover around. I was looking at that every year. Every year, I, I look at all the rosters mm -hmm. and I look at all the managers and coaches and the people, people in the organization that are spring training instructors and roving pitching instructors. Then all the minor league affiliates, change managers and coaches. Now they're having all this stuff in the minor league. They're having two pitching coaches. Hitting coach or two hitting coaches, a psychologist. They got ten plus people traveling with minor league teams oh, now. Whoa! I mean, it's whoa. Just insane. That is insane. So I think with Rigetti and all. Go, oh my God! Well, you know, it's time for change. I mean, I, I you know, I don't know. I mean, I can't. Well, coach, teams. the effect of coaching and managing is so subjective over the years that the, you can't really ever have a theory and be totally wrong, or totally right. right. But I have a theory, 
that if they would put the most money into the coaches that coaches coach kids at the earliest stage of their development, 